To ensure you don't miss a single Hardware Unbox video, hit subscribe, then tap the bell. Welcome back to Hardware Unbox. Today we're looking at the cheapest high refresh rate monitor you can currently get in Australia, at least through our favourite retailer, PC Case Gear. You guys have been asking for more budget monitor content, so today, thanks to PC Case Gear and Acer, we're looking at something very affordable. The monitor in question is the Acer KG251QF, which retails for $299 Aussie dollars. When and if this monitor comes to the US, it should cost just $200 or so, which is right at the bottom end of pricing for this kind of monitor. The right now it is available in Europe as well for a great price. So yeah, it is a highly affordable budget monitor. For this price, the KG251QF provides a 24.5 inch 1080p TN LCD panel with a maximum refresh rate of 144Hz. That 144Hz refresh rate is the key thing here. You can get 1080p monitors for less than 300 Aussie or 200 US, but you won't find many or any that provide provide 144 hertz for less. So if you really want to get into high frame rate, high refresh gaming, and you only have a few hundred to spend, this is the best option. So what does 200 bucks get you? Well, as I mentioned, it is a pretty basic TN panel. It's on the smaller size for modern displays, and it is just 1080p. All of that is pretty much a given at this sort of price point. It does pack FreeSync support though, which is great for AMD GPU owners, and it has low frame rate compensation, so you get adaptive sync throughout the entire refresh range. And the KG251QF shouldn't be confused with the older KG251Q, which is effectively the same monitor just with a 75Hz refresh rate. If you want the full 144Hz refresh and LFC, you'll need to look out for the KG251QF. Confusingly, there's also a new KG251Q with a 240Hz refresh rate, so just double check the spec sheet before you buy, as Ace's monitor naming scheme is pretty confusing most of the time. I'm going to talk more about specs and calibration a bit later in this review, so first let's take a look at the design. As this is a budget monitor, I wasn't really expecting much, so it's no real surprise that Acer has delivered a pretty basic build here. It looks decent for a cheap monitor if I'm honest, though almost all of the exterior is built using plastic, including the stand. You're not going to get that premium finish here or any crazy game elements like RGB mood lighting, though thanks to some metal reinforcing, the entire build is quite sturdy. Acer did deliver in one important area, and that's bezel size. The top and sides are just 6.5 millimeters thick, which is in line with most modern monitors and will be great for those looking to create a multi-monitor setup. However, the stand is thoroughly inflexible and extremely basic, supporting just tilt adjustment. No height, no swivel, and no pivot adjustments can be made. These features are left to more premium monitor designs. For connectivity, we have HDMI, DisplayPort, and DVI inputs, and there's also a couple of audio jacks, both for input to the internal speakers and output from HDMI or DisplayPort to headphones or other audio devices. The included dual 4 watt speakers are rubbish, so I wouldn't consider using them seriously for even one second, but that's not exactly unusual for built-in monitor speakers. Unfortunately, to access the on-screen menu, you'll have to suffer through the torture of non-directional controls. At least the buttons are on the front of the monitor, so you can actually see what you're pressing, but no D-pad makes navigating and changing settings a bit of a chore. I guess D-pad controls are something restricted to high-end monitors at this point. In any case, there's nothing overly exciting in the on-screen controls apart from all the usual stuff you're used to seeing in modern monitors. In fact, it looks like everything from Acer's high-end gaming monitors is in here, including cheat crosshairs, low blue light modes, adaptive contrast, multiple presets, and more. If you're moving from just a 60Hz display to 144Hz for the first time, the difference is seriously enormous for gaming, especially if your system is good enough to push frame rates into the high end of the refresh window. Games seem more fluid and more responsive, and the added clarity of a higher refresh increases the amount of perceptible detail during fast motion scenes. When you're pushing near or above 100 FPS on a high refresh monitor, it's simply a better way to game, and moving back to 60 FPS on a 60 Hz monitor can feel sluggish in comparison. High refresh rates are definitely not a gimmick, and in my opinion, it's worth the extra cost if you can afford it. 
There is some debate about whether you need adaptive sync at higher refresh rates, and I tend to find it more useful in the sub 75 FPS range. So if you're gaming at those sort of frame rates, you will get a better experience with an AMD GPU as it can actually make use of FreeSync with the KG251QF. But if you have an NVIDIA GPU, I still think this display is a great option as equivalent G-Sync monitors are a fair bit more expensive. If you're running games at high frame rates, it's not a significant loss and you'll still be getting the benefits of a high refresh rate. This monitor uses a TN panel, so it has all the usual strengths and weaknesses of this panel type. Response times are very good, rated at 1 millisecond gray to gray, and from what I could see, motion blur and ghosting aren't a problem, especially with overdrive enabled. Viewing angles, though, are quite weak, especially vertically, which tends to be a major issue with TN panels. Of course, it's fine when you're viewing the panel from straight on. The KG251QF provides a level of brightness that exceeds ACES specifications. I measured around 458 nits of peak brightness using the default calibration, while ACES suggests a brightness of 400 nits, so that's not a bad start for this monitor. I don't actually recommend using the monitor at 450 nits, but brightness does tend to be a strength of TN panels. Acer doesn't list a proper contrast ratio for this display, instead opting for a garbage adaptive contrast figure, which they give as 100 million to 1. In actual fact, most TN panels are sub 1000 to 1, and that's the case with this monitor, a contrast ratio of 929 to 1 that only dips slightly when brightness is reduced. This is down to a relatively high black level, though I wouldn't necessarily describe the panel as having a backlight bleed issue, rather the entire panel just can't block out the backlight fully. Again, that's a common issue for budget TN panels. Uniformity is the worst aspect of this display's performance, and that's really the major difference between a budget monitor like the KG251QF and something higher end. There are clearly areas that are brighter than others, and it doesn't really require a measurement like this to spot them. That said, the center to edge delta E value is as large as 5.0 in some areas, which indicates a visually noticeable difference. And keep in mind, this is a relatively small monitor, which makes uneven backlighting stand out more. That said, you're unlikely to notice uniformity issues while gaming. It's most noticeable when viewing largely solid colors in desktop and productivity apps. So that's just something to keep aware of. Default color performance isn't amazing by any stretch. Acer did target a correct white color temperature of 6500K, and we get reasonably close with just a slight green tint. However, they forgot to calibrate the rest of the grayscale range. There is a noticeable yellow tint to grays and poor gamma with a grayscale delta E average of 5.32. Saturation performance is mediocre, though a delta E average of 3.88 isn't the worst I've seen. And considering this is a budget panel, we could be getting a lot worse straight out of the box. It's definitely pleasing to see 97.7% sRGB coverage. Some budget displays can't produce the full sRGB gamut, so at least the top end of colors will be well saturated within the bounds of sRGB. Color checker results show an average delta E of 4.75 with the highest DEs in skin tones and reds, which matches with the overall slight yellow tint this monitor provides in its default state. I'll also show the luminance sweeps here, which you can see the largest deviance from accurate in the low luminance range, where the KG251QF is particularly loose. The good news is the KG251QF is calibration friendly, both through just on-screen display controls and using external hardware. Tweaking settings using the OSD controls won't get you perfect results, but you can achieve tighter delta E's across the board using the settings you can see here. Of course, there will be some deviance among all models of this monitor, but these are the settings that worked best for me. This tightened up the grayscale delta E average from 5.46 to 2.9, though it doesn't correct the yellow tint or gamma problem fully. In fact, the other available gamma settings just make the issue worse. Saturation improves from 3.93 to 2.44, a decent gain, and color checker comes in from 4.75 to 3.2. It doesn't make the display super accurate, but it is an important improvement that you can get without any other hardware. One thing I should note is calibration does reduce the contrast ratio down to about 730 to 1, which is getting to a pretty low value at this point. I'm not surprised to see this behavior from a TN panel, and it does remain one of the weakest aspects to this technology. Luckily, if you fully calibrate the KG251QF, you can achieve great results using Spectracal's Calman 5. Average delta E's were sub 1.0 in every test, gamma was corrected, the CCT average is near perfect and even the luminance sweeps are tightened up a fair bit. There is still some looseness in performance near the bottom end of the luminance and grayscale range, but that's just a nitpick and we are just talking about a budget display here.
If you're interested in using the software profile I created for my KG251QF with your KG251QF, if you decide to buy one, that will be available through our Patreon page. I get asked from time to time to provide these profiles and I think it makes a nice bonus for those that support us through Patreon, thanks to all that do. Keep in mind, no two monitors are identical, so my profile might not be as accurate as it could be for your monitor, but it should be worlds better than the default profile. Head over to patreon.com slash hardrunbox to download the profile if you want. So all up, I'm impressed with the Acer KG251QF. It's always a bit of a gamble with budget monitors or really any budget product, as sometimes you get a steaming pile of crap. However, this monitor is not crap at all. It delivers great specs, especially the refresh rate at an awesome price. Performance out of the box isn't amazing, but it responds well to calibration and the only major issues are typical TN grievances like low contrast ratio, some poor viewing angles and uneven backlighting. The design and build is basic, but it does the job. I'd quite easily recommend this budget monitor considering what it provides for just $300 redos or around 200 US. It's really good value for money and you'd be hard pressed to find a better monitor without spending a lot more for an IPS or VA display. And the great news here is there is a very similar 27 inch variant, the KG271A, that's available for only 369 Australian dollars if you wanted a larger panel. While I haven't tested that specific monitor yet, it has a really attractive price point as well in keeping with Ace's aggressive targeting of the budget market. That's it for this review of the Acer KG251QF. Don't forget to head over to our Patreon page where you'll find the calibrated display profile for this monitor. Subscribe for more monitor reviews just like this one, and I'll catch you in the next one.